10.30, so let's start. Hello, nice to see so many ship lovers here today. I'm Francesco Giudici, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I'm part of the virtualization team and I work on the SPICE project. Today I will talk about cloning VMs. And I would like to start this presentation introducing a, a superstar. Do you know who I'm going to talk about? It's uh, Dolly the Ship. Basically, she was the first mamma that was cloned back in 1996 from an adult cell. It happened at the Rosalind Institute, which is part of the Edinburgh University in uh, Scotland. And this was quite interesting because no one at the time thought that this was possible. And it was not easy at all anyway. So she was the only successful clone from 277 attempts. So how the ship cloning works. Basically, you take a cell with the desired genes and extract the nucleus. Then you take an egg cell and remove the nucleus. You put the two together and you basically get the cell clones. Put all of this in a surrogate mother and you will likely will fail. We'll have to do that 200 times and maybe you will be lucky enough. What about the VMs? If you have a VM and you want to clone it, it's just a matter of a double click. <laughs> well, there is anyway a not trivial difference between these two processes. And that's that when you're going to clone a ship, you start from an adult ship, take a cell with the DNA, but when, with your clone, you basically start from scratch. Uh, you start from the embryo. So in the very end, you will have a different ship, both in the look and the personality, as the environment and experiences of the clone will be different from the ones of the parent. But when are you going to clone a VM, you get an exact copy of that VM, including all the configuration and the log files, uh, everything that is being collected till that time. The problem is when you have multiple clones that live in the same environment, each clone needs a unique identity, otherwise they may interfere with each other in a bad way. Uh, so what is the environment for a ship? Maybe it's a grass. And can you figure out what is the environment for a virtual machine or host? <laughs> yeah, you're pretty near. Yeah, it's the IP address or more in general the network because it's where the, the host basically interact with each other. And in order to identify your host in the network, you have to take care of the MAC address, first of all, which identifies the network interface card, <coughs> the IP address, for sure, be it dynamic or uh, static, it should be different, and the host name. Let's look briefly what happens when you clone a virtual machine to each one of these. Let's start with the MAC address. So here we clone the MAC address with Virtual Machine Manager, but any cloning tool it will do basically the same, that this will take care of the MAC address for you. It will automatically, automatically change it. So if you want, you can put a custom one, but you are not required to. This is all set. What about the IP address? If you have a static IP address in two virtual machine and you boot them, it's your fault. So you can just disparate it like this Lego guy. I expect you to take care of it, changing the, the static IP address on, on the other virtual machine. Just for reference, if you use Network Manager, you can do that quite easily with MCLI uh, command tool and change the IPv4 addresses with property. But what if you have a dynamic IP address there. You might think that, okay, I don't have to, care, to take care of that because it will be the DHCP server that is in charge to assigning a different IP address to each one of the clones. Well, that's somehow true, 
but it's a bit more complex than this because the DCP server will identify the host from its DCP request. And in particular, it will look for DCP4 to the DCP client ID option that should contain a unique identifier. As the standard says, it must be unique among the client identifier used on the subnet to which the client is attached. So we must ensure that different clones will have different DCP client ID. Regarding DCPv6, it's a little bit different in the sense that uh, the binding of the address assigned by the DCP server will be to a couple of options. One is the DCP unique ID option that will identify the host, which is basically a UUID that should be unique on the network. And then the identity association identifier option, with, which will identify a specific uh, interface on that host. Again, just for reference, if you use a network manager, yeah, I like network manager if you haven't understood that, uh, you will have to change, you can change it to different options, that is IPv4 DCP client D, or IPv6 DCP DUID. Uh, it will allow you to explicitly sub them. You can have more details on these looking at the man page or NM settings. What about the host name? It is important because usually it is, set in, in, it is sent in the CPU request from the client and will be used by the CP server to, um, to uh, be registered in the local DNS system. If you have two virtual machines sending the same host name to the CP server, you end up just having the last one usually sending the, the last DCP request to win. Okay, to change this, uh, there are a couple of examples here. We're using host name CTL and network manager once again. There are a lot of ways. There are, I link here uh, a blog post from Seth Canon that shows you seven ways to change your host name in a Linux system. Now something that is a bit unrelated in general to networking, but it's more specific to the guest operating system. And it is the machine ID file. As I said, this is just for Linux. What we have seen till now instead was for every kind of operating system, so Windows, Mac, Unix, whatever. But in Linux, we have this file that as its man state uniquely identifies the host. It should be considered confidential. This means that we want a different virtual machine will have different machine ID. And this is not something that when you clone a virtual machine is automatically taken care of. You can change it just removing the machine ID file and regenerating one with systemd machine ID setup or dbus UUD gem tools. But I will warn you, don't play too much with this. Pay attention because it's better that as soon as you change it, you reboot your virtual machine and you at you should really ensure that you have a valid machine ID before rebooting the host, otherwise you may even have issues rebooting it. This uh, machine ID configuration file, it is used to derive all the unique identifiers that application might need in order to, to communicate also with other hosts. So while this is important, we will see it right now. We had an example of what really can go wrong. This is taken from something that happened for real. You can reproduce the scenario. It's easy, but yeah, it happens also when one doesn't want that this kind of stuff happens. What is the scenario? You have a virtual machine that is configured, in this case, with system in network D, and this is configured to get the IP address by the CP server. You do multiple clones of that, and you start the clones in the same network without doing any special configuration. As we have seen, the Mac is taken care, the Mac is, is taken care by uh, the cloning tool, so that's okay. But what about, what about the DCP client ID, the OSNI and the machine ID? No one takes care by default. You don't know what will happen, so there is not check on this. So the result will be that the PowerVM 
and the clones will experience severe connectivity disruption. And let's see why this happens. What are the details? Let's dig a bit, a bit more in the standard for DCPv4. There is an extension to the standard that tries to put together how the binding of an EP address and uh, an identifier sent to the DCP uh, server are mapped. Uh, the idea is to use to reuse what is done in the DCPv6, that is, uh, have an option for the host for the for identifying the host, the DUID, and an option to identify the interface, and use this also in the DCP4 client ID in a very easy way. Basically, you can concatenate down and put in the DCP client ID option. As you can see, the first four bytes are the one of the AA ID, and the other ones are from the DUID. So systemd network D uh, uses this extension, and what it does, well, in order to generate an identifier for the identity association ID, that is to map the interface in the host, it will use a function that is based on the interface name. Unluckily, in your VM clones, the interface name will be the same, also if you change the MAC address. Regarding the DUID, the system in network D will do a smart, a smart thing, that is, I will use something that is guaranteed to be unique in the host. And we've seen that for Linux hosts, the configuration of a unique identifier is in the, in the machine ID file. So it will lose a function of the machine ID. As we have already, uh, already said, the machine ID is not changed automatically when you are going to do a clone of your virtual machine. So the result will be that when the first virtual machine starts, it will send a DCP client ID uh, constructed like we have just seen. The DCP server will be a reply offering an IP address, in this case, the .38 one. When a clone starts, it will send the same DCP client ID, and the TCP server will be fooled, thinking it's the same machine, and will reply with the same IP address. So you will end up having, on the same network, two virtual machines with, with the same IP address. And what do you expect to happen? No internet connection, or severely disrupted connectivity. Why? Because when I was tries to, um, to reach out one of the VMs. Uh, maybe it's just the gateway that tries to reply to some request from, from one of the VM. It will try, first of all, to resolve uh, the, the IP, to map the IP address with the MAC address of the virtual machine he has to reach out. But when it does this, it will reply multiple, it will get multiple replies for each one of the virtual machine, so there will be a lot of MAC addresses, it will pick one, but more virtual machine you have, more likely it will pick up the wrong one. So, what's the right way to clone a virtual machine? First of all, we have to clone the virtual machine, as we have seen from the beginning, using Virtual Machine Manager, or in this case, I use the virtual virt clone tool that is basically a one-liner allowing to do the same job. As we have seen, uh, the MAC address is already okay. There are multiple options here. It's not that, that complicated. If you are interested to really have maybe your specific uh, name of your clone or uh, where to put your cloned uh, disk, you, you could just check the uh, page of it. And then what you have to do is to do as it was a ship. We've seen at the beginning that when you clone a ship, it starts basically from scratch, being able to have its own experience, its own, uh, its own development. And in the VM, this, this not, does not happen. So uh, how can you do the same? Basically have a copy, a, a virtual machine clone that could have its own configuration or uh, identity. Well, just configuring or, or reconfiguring it as needed. 
so that he could start somehow from scratch and develop his own identity. You do that easily with a tool that is vertices prep. It allows you to prepare your virtual machine before booting. And it is as easy as launching it by passing minus D, that stands for the main, and the name of your virtual machine. In this example, I also pass it a, an optional uh, parameter that is host name, so I can change also the host name. But uh, if you just run it, it will take care of a lot of stuff, like, first of all, uh, changing the machine ID, removing the CPU releases, and uh, really other stuff done automatically. It can do also some other useful stuff, like, for instance, removing user accounts, if you don't need that, or changing the root password. Yeah, there are really a lot of useful features. You can find all of them in the manual of it, in the main page of it. So, we come to the summary. We have seen that when you want to clone a virtual machine, it's pretty easy. It could be just a matter of double click or using a one-liner. But maybe it's not that easy to have them running by side by side. Because each clone does not have a unique identity by default. We should really ensure the network identity that is especially taking care of the IP address and maybe of the host name if it is set. But to do this, or you configure your virtual machine by hand, or you can use also an handy tool that is the vertices prep. It will allow you to deconfigure and reconfigure your host. And that's it. Any question? Are good also question about Dolly and the ship, if you want. <laughs> yes, please. So, is it, like, is it, uh, what kind of fast is that, uh, like, important? What do you mean, what Vertex Prep does, I will come into line. How about it? It inspects the guest, it can detect all the virtual uh, guests installed in the, in, the, in the disk image, for example, if there are multiple OSs, it mounts them, so to reconstruct the actual structure of the guest or partition with their own mount point, etc. And then it does various operations. So just for the recording, the question was about what kind of uh, 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 file system are supported. And the answer is every, every uh, file system that is supported by your Linux source, basically. Any other question? Do you like sheep? <laughs> Have you heard about Dolly in, in the past? What happened? Yeah. Of course. Okay, I, I will adjust. Yeah, please, another question.
Okay, so the question is, uh, I had the impression that uh, GCP would assign IP address basis on the, on the MAC address. What, what we covered in this presentation seems to say something different. Well, what DCP server does is basically will map the same IP address yeah, to a MAC address, but it will, it will identify the host by a different option, which is the D, that DCP ID option. I, I will say, explain a bit why this happened, is that imagine you have a, your host and you're going to change your network card. You will change your MAC address, right? So when you send out the, your DCP request after rebooting, you, if you we use the same DCP uh, client ID, the, the DCP server will understand that you are the same host also if you change your MAC address. And it will be able to give you the same IP address. That's the main point. This is why, well, another thing that uh, I didn't say is that usually the DCP client ID is derived from the MAC address. Also to, to deal with this cloning behind stuff, if it's not done, let's say, properly, um, at least we ensure that the MAC address is changed with a cloning tool, so it will work, usually. If you use, for instance, Network Manager right now, you do your clone, you don't change the machine ID, you will get different IP addresses. I take the example of System E Network D because they do by default different. And I think they do right. The, the, the error here is that we don't change the machine ID. So anyway, sorry, I, I went a bit too far away, but the answer is there is another option to control uh, how to be identified by the DCP server because you may change the, the network interface card of your host, and you want anyway to get the same IP address and have the DCP server to recognize you. Okay, is that the option 61? Yeah, for DCP4, the option is option 61. Okay. Another question? Okay. The question is, which guest operating system are supported by this word syspread? I guess it is just Linux right now, but, but there are Windows also that is going to be supported at some point. Linux is well supported. Uh, some operations work also on non-Linux Unix systems. Windows is at the moment is not supported. Uh, oh. but, uh, all different uh, kinds of uh, So just for the recording, once again, the question was, which kind of operating system are supported? And there was a, a good question, a good reply from Pinotoscan. And it is that basically all the Linux flavors, probably all, all of them, also Unix in some part, Windows is not yet supported. For Windows anyway, there is the Syspread tool from Microsoft that could be something uh, more specific to Windows if you're interested in it. Okay, we are out of time. So thank you for to be here. <laughs>